Good morning. Welcome. So glad you're here today. And today we have the honor of having Dave Young as our guest preacher. And so treat him well, <laughs> treat like you would treat me, and I'm, I know you will. So we'll have a great day, and we'll continue worship. Uh, LSB today will be 702, and we'll continue. sisters, we declare with our mouths today that we begin in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Brothers, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Take a moment to meditate on that. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord who has begun this good work in us bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And we continue with 
psalm responsive, uh, Psalm 112, 1 through 9. Praise the Lord. Blessed is the man who fears the Lord, who greatly delights in his commandments. Wealth and riches are in his house, and his righteousness endures forever. It is well with the man who deals generously and lands, who conducts his affairs with justice. He is not afraid of bad news. His heart is firm, trusting in the Lord. His heart is steady. He will not be afraid until he looks to provide on the earth. He has distributed freely. He has given to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. His horn is exalted in honor. Brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have promised to hear the petitions of those who are asking your sons and mercifully incline your ears to us who have now made their prayers and supplications to you, and grant that those things that we have faithfully asked according to your will. Brothers and sisters, after being reconciled with God through Jesus Christ, his son, we show our intent to be reconciled to one another 
by the sharing of the peace. The first reading today is from Acts 21, 8 to 15. Acts is written by Luke, and um, in this section, Luke is recounting Paul's journey to Jerusalem. Paul visits several different churches along the way, including the church in Caesarea. On the next day, we were departed and came to Caesarea, and we entered the house of Philip, the evangelist who was one of the seven, and stayed with him. He had four unmarried daughters who prophesied. While we were staying for many days, a prophet named Agabus came down from Judea, and coming to us, he took Paul's belt and bound his own feet and hands and said, Thus says the Holy Spirit, This is how the Jews at Jerusalem will bind the man who owns this belt and deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles. When we heard this, we and the people there urged him, Paul, not to go to Jerusalem. Then Paul answered, What are you doing, weeping and breaking my heart? For I am ready not only to be imprisoned, but even to die in Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus. And since he would not be persuaded, we ceased and said, let the will of the Lord be done. After these days, we got ready and went up to Jerusalem. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle reading is from 1 Peter uh, 4, 12 through 19. 1 Peter is often considered the epistle of hope. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery trial when it comes upon you to test you as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice in so far as you share Christ's suffering, that you may also rejoice and be glad when his glory is revealed. If you are insulted for the name of Christ, you are blessed, because the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, or a thief, or an evildoer, or as a meddler, Yet if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in that name. For it is time for judgment to begin at the household of God. And if it begins with us, what will be the outcome for those who do not obey the gospel of God? And if the righteous is scarcely saved, what will become of the ungodly and the sinner? Therefore, let those who suffer according to God's will and trust their souls to a faithful creator while doing so. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
I'd invite you to stand for the reading of our Holy Gospel. Today's Gospel reading is recorded by St. Matthew in the 6th chapter, beginning with the ninth verse. Jesus then said this, Pray then like this, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. This is the Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. How many times in your life do you think you have prayed this prayer? I probably learned it when I was five years old, memorized it then. And, and so every week, at least once a week at church, since that time, I've, I've prayed it every week. And so that would be at least 3,000 times. But I'm a pastor, and sometimes we had two services, and sometimes we had three services, and we had chapel services during the week, so I can't begin to even guess how many times we have prayed this beautiful prayer. And when Jesus taught his disciples to pray, how are we to address the almighty creator of the universe? Jesus says, our Father. What a great privilege it is to address the almighty creator of the universe and address him with this new relationship of God being our Father. It was a totally new concept to the disciples. They had addressed God before as Lord or Adonai, but never as Father. He is our Father in heaven. And that tells us two things, that he is both able to and willing to do whatever we might ask. And we name, know that his name is holy. But we pray, how would be thy name? Because we want his name to be kept holy among us. We pray for his kingdom to come. And some days, I don't know about you, but I'm pretty anxious for Jesus to return because this world is not getting any better. So we're anxious for his return. But when we pray this, we're also praying that others would come into his kingdom, that his kingdom would grow. And then we pray, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Thy will be done. That's not always an easy prayer to pray. God's will may not be the same as my will. So are you sure you want to pray, thy will be done? Because for many of us, what we're really thinking when we pray is this. I would like my will to be done. We come into this world with a sinful human nature, and we want things our way. We're born selfish. As babies, we're not considerate of our, of our moms and dads. Parents need sleep too, don't they? But when we babies get hungry in the middle of the night, we let our parents know. We cry until we get the attention that we need. Now, babies can't help it. They're helpless. They need their parents for everything. But even when we are grown adults, we often want our will to be done. And it shows up in our prayer life. Think about the content of your personal prayers. Are your personal prayers a list of things you want God to do for you? Lord, please heal my sister. Please help me get a new job because I don't like the job that I'm in. Please help my kids do better in school. Even if we compare the amount of praise for God in our prayers to the amount of requests that we have, we would see probably that our prayer life is probably more like praying, my will be done. And when we compare the amount of gratitude, the thanksgivings that we offer to God in our personal prayers to the list of requests that we have, it may also look like we really want my will to be done. You know, another way that we show that we really want my will to be done is by our actions. Do we ever get stubborn with our spouse because we want it our way? 
God's will is that we would submit to one another, be yielding to each other, not being stubborn with each other. We hear the word of God from Paul's writing to the Ephesians in 521, submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Submit to one another. And yet we don't often want to be doers of that word. God's will is that we would be reconciled to each other. A third way that we show we really want my will to be done is by our lack of actions. We know there are plenty of opportunities to do good to others, but we often just forego them. James writes this. He says, whoever then knows the good he ought to do and doesn't do it, sins. The priest and the Levite in the parable of the Good Samaritan are, are prime examples. Jesus tells us in Luke 10, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he fell into the hands of robbers. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road, and when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. A Levite, when he came to the place, saw him, passed by on the other side. They saw the good that they knew they should do, but they cho choose not to help. So are we sometimes like that priest and Levite? Do we walk by on the other side? Another example of the good that we ought to do is being a witness for Jesus. Jesus tells us that God's will is that we go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that he has commanded us. But have we even shared the gospel of Jesus Christ with our neighbors who don't go to church? The will of God is that we would share Jesus with those who don't know him. Do we even really care if our neighbors are going to get into heaven or not? Thy will be done requires us to be not just hearers of the word of God, but to be doers of the word of God. But when Jesus prayed, thy will be done, he meant it. He acted on it. His whole life was doing the will of his Father. In John 6, 38, Jesus said, for I have come down from heaven not to do my will, but to do the will of him who sent me. His father sent him on this mission to be the Messiah, the promised Savior. So Jesus performs the miracles that show that he was the promised Messiah. He heals the sick. He gives sight to the blind. He makes the lame to walk. He is the obedient son who does the will of his father. In John 14, 31, Jesus said, But the world must learn that I love the Father and that I do exactly what my Father has commanded me. And even the words of Jesus that he speaks, even those words express the will of his Father. In John 14, Jesus said, These words you hear are not my own. They belong to the Father who sent me. So in the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 5, 6, and 7. Those are the words the Father gave his Son, including the difficult words to love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. That's the will of the Father. And in the Garden of Gethsemane, we hear Jesus pray, not my will be done, but yours. Now, yes, he does pray, my Father, if it is possible, May this cup be taken from me. He prays that because he knows what is ahead. He knows that the sins of the whole world will be placed on him. He knows that the wrath of God will be poured out on him on that cross. But he concludes, yet not my will be done, but yours be done. And then he took action. And he drank that cup. He gives himself up to those enemies in the garden. He doesn't defend himself because he came to do the will of his father. And he prays for his enemies. 
He prays for those who are nailing him to the cross. Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. And he stays on that cross until finally, taking all the punishment that we deserve, he cries out, it is finished. And because he drank that cup, we now have a completely different relationship with our Creator. Now we get to call him our Father, our Abba Father. And as his children, we're anxious to do his will. But what is his will for us? Paul writes to the Thessalonians. He says, be joyful always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. God's will is that we would be joyful always, not happy. God doesn't care if we're happy. He cares if we're holy. But he says, be joyful always. Joyful is different than happy. Happy is just an emotion. Joyful is a state of being. My life is full of joy because my eternal life with my Father in heaven is guaranteed. God's will is that we would pray continually, that we, we, we would be in constant communication with him. What father doesn't want to be communicating and talking and hear from his children? Our heavenly father loves it when we pray. God's will is that we give thanks in all circumstances, even going through the fiery trials like we heard about in 1 Peter. We have a perfect Father who knows our needs and provides for us. Jesus tells us what God's will is in John 6, verse 40. My Father's will is that everyone who looks to the Son and believes in Him shall have eternal life, and I will raise Him up at the last day. Now that's why we can pray, thy will be done. This is the will of God that brings us comfort and peace. We are guaranteed eternal life. We're guaranteed the resurrection of the body, a new body, a perfect body, a body that doesn't feel the aches and pains that we so often experience. But until then, as his children, we want to learn the will of God. And that's why we study his word, where he reveals his will. And we not only hear it, but we seek to do his will. And God promises us in Hebrews 13, he says, May the God of peace equip you, who through the eternal covenant brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, May the God of peace equip you with everything good to do his will. And may he work in us what is pleasing to him through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. He will equip us for doing his will. He will work in us what is pleasing to him. We call that sanctification. The Holy Spirit working in us to do the will of God. And so, yes, we truly can pray, thy will be done. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we come before you today so grateful for the work of our Savior Jesus, his work on the cross that changes our relationship with you as he has paid the price for our sins. And we pray now, Lord, that as he did your will here on earth, that we also would do your will. We pray that you would help us every day to see that will, to see the things that are, you are calling us to do. And we pray all of this as we ask it in the precious name of our Savior Jesus. Amen. I'd invite you now to stand as we confess our common faith, today using the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, 
begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, who moments are made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God, our Father in heaven, look with mercy on us, your needy children on earth, and grant us the grace that your holy name be hallowed by us and all the world through the pure and true teaching of your word and the fervent love shown for in our lives. Graciously turn from us all false doctrine and evil living, whereby your precious name blaspheme and profane. Lord, in your mercy, may your kingdom come to us and expand, bring all transgressions and those who are blinded and bound in the devil's kingdom to know Jesus Christ, your Son, by faith that the number of Christians may be increased. Lord, in your mercy. Strengthen us by your spirit according to your will, both in life and in death, in the midst of both good and evil things, that our own wills may be crucified daily and sacrificed to your good and gracious will. Into your mercy hands we command all things and all who are in need, praying for them at all times. Thy will be done, Lord, in your mercy. Grant us our daily bread. Preserve us from greed and selfish cares, and help us trust in you to provide for all our needs. Lord, in your mercy. Forgive us, us our sins, and we also forgive those who sin against us, so that our hearts may be at peace and may rejoice in good conscience before you, that no sin may ever frighten or alarm us. Lord, in your mercy. Lead us not into temptation, O Lord, but help us by your Spirit to subdue our flesh, to turn from the world and its ways, and to overcome the devil with all his wiles, Lord, in your mercy. And lastly, O Heavenly Father, deliver us from all evil of both body and soul, now and forever, Lord, in your mercy. We trust, O oh Lord, in your great mercy to hear and answer us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
brothers and sisters. Our Lord Jesus Christ, at the very night he was betrayed, he took the bread and he broke it. He gave thanks and he gave it to the, to the disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given to you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took the cup after the supper, he gave thanks, and he gave it to them, saying, Drink it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink and eat in remembrance of me. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us, let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and solitary that we should all at times give, in, our, in all places, give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all company of the heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying. Brothers and sisters, let's pray the very own prayer that our Lord Jesus Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, as you have noticed, your vicar. <laughs> we jump a little ahead, but um, let's do this again. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the very own night that he was betrayed, he broke it. And he gave thanks and he said, this is my body broken for you. Take and eat. In the same way, he took the cup and he gave thanks. And he said, drink of it all, all of you. And this is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. And do this in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Welcome to the table.
brothers and sisters, let us pray. We give thanks to you, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this solitary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy, you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Brothers and sisters, we have a few announcements, but before uh, we do this, let's give an applause and thank our brother, uh, Dave Young, to bring the message today. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for serving the house of the Lord and serving his people. Uh, in the back of the bulletin, you have a few announcements. Um, I know Ronnie talked about the endowment uh, last week, but if you have any questions, please contact us, call us. Um, will be available to give you more information on that. And September 22nd, we'll have a blood drive um, here at Bethel. And a uh, new Bible class starting, room five at 945, uh, Jesus in the Old Testament. Uh, we also uh, invite anyone uh, that may need to take a lunch with the pastor, if you don't know Pastor Chris. Uh, and also a Bible study on discipleship. Uh, the Great Sending. Uh, that's at 10 o'clock on the stage. Um, so if you have any more questions, let us know. Um, and this is it for the announcements. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Oh, you, you have a, an announcement?
12 o'clock today. Room 5 will have the lunch uh, for the legacy. So if you have any questions, ask Ronnie. But uh, uh, please participate. Uh, do anything that you can do for this house. Uh, this is how I got here. So everything that we do, we are thankful that anyone and everyone participates. And, and so this is very important. And thank you, Ronnie, for reminding us. Um, and lunch will be provided. Yeah. Oh, another reason to come, you see? Lunch will be provided. Just let us know the numbers. <laughs> All right. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.